welcome to another video and today we'll be going to be solving code forces round 801 and let's read the first question and it states michael and joe are playing a game the game is played on a grid within rows and in columns uh, we denote the square on the ith row and jth column by ij uh, michael starts by saying two numbers h and w Formerly an HW subrectangle starts with some AB and contains all the squares IJ. Okay. Says three comma three cross two. Okay. Okay, that's the deal. So three comes here. Finally, Michael has to guess the maximum number of subrectangle number in the subrectangle. He wins if he gets it right. But that is weird. So Michael is not seeing this. How does he know the maximum number then? Okay. Um, let's see the input test cases then it would make sense I guess. Let's take the input. We have first test cases. Then we have what? N comma M. The size of the grid, of course. And then we have N lines and N integers. and it is guaranteed that all numbers are distinct each test case print a single positive integer i had already copied okay. with single positive integer the minimum possible area the subject tangle can have still ensuring that michael can guarantee the victory This doesn't make sense. If he doesn't know the subrectangle, how can he guess the maximum number in that subrectangle? He can only guess if the subrectangle is the whole board. What does Michael know? Oh, 
like in this case if the size is 4 that would be 2 cross 2 then this middle part will always come and now Michael knows that 8 is the largest number fuck that's it's like okay and in this case if he chooses 3 cross 2 then then he knows that 13 is coming no 3 cross 2 he doesn't know what kind of bullshit is this question okay if <coughs> if okay we're just gonna find the maximum number first Now that we have found out the maximum number, now we also know the coordinates of the mm, maximum number. And now that we have the coordinates of the maximum number in the lot. Uh, now we can make sure that uh, Joey chooses that number so that is included in each square he decides to take whatever. so let's say in this triangle 13 is the number sorry 16 is the highest number so if he chooses a 9 cross 9 wait 9 plus 9 yeah, that's the minimum he can choose I think yeah, so 9 basically 3 plus 3 would be the answer so I need to figure out a formula and what would that formula be ah, fucking so <laughs> so that formula would some go like this 0 1 2 so the distance from the what do you call it um, distance from the left and the right and that would be in distance distance from the left would be equal to just i plus 1 and in distance from the right would be equal to sorry this would be j plus 1 and this would be m minus j so that would be um, this is 3 and this 2 so that would be 1 I think 1 or 2 something like that plus 1 I guess I don't know <laughs> and I'm just gonna take int distance sideways to be equal to max of these two right and similarly I'm gonna take the distance from the top and that would be equal to 1 for this one and 3 for this one or 2 2 for this one or 3 I don't know I don't really know. max of i plus 1 minus and n minus i plus 1 because n is 4 and i is 1 
4 minus 1 is 3 already so that's not true and this would be this only and this would be this only right so c out this and this and this up into this sideways I don't even know if I want to participate in this contest anymore. This discussion is ready to win. J was not declared nice. How do I fix all of this now? Come on, come on, that is easy peasy, come on, just run my code, just fucking run my code. See, I am really scared to submit it now. I'm just gonna do it anyway. Three one zero one circle game. I wanna see the leader board. Where is the leader board? We have two four eight eight. That's good. Good I think. <laughs> but these are also high. Let's see other people. He's already in two minutes. What what an absolute legend. Jangli is all done the same. This guy in five wow. This guy also saw it second one. Damn. Okay, Mike and Joey are playing a game with some stones. Specifically, they have n piles of stones of sizes. Those these piles are arranged in a circle. Uh -huh. Game goes as follows: players take turns moving some positive number of stones from a pile in clockwise order, starting from pile one. Normally, if a player removed stones from pile I, the other player removes stones from pile I mod n plus one on the next one. Huh? If a player cannot remove any stones on their turn, they lose. Mike goes first. Who will win? I don't know who will win. You, you tell me. Who the fuck will win? Okay, I have three test cases. I have an N and I have a pile of stones of sizes and I don't know what the size means that I hope it's the count of number of stones on that pile so this, this is the sizes of the piles so they have N piles of stones of sizes what does the fuck what the fuck does that mean? okay so these are basically I'm considering these are the count wait
uh, Mike goes first. In the first session, Mike takes all 37 turns, stones on his first turn, saying this kid Joey can just copy Mike's moves every time. Since Mike went first, he will hit zero on the first try. One move before Joey does so the second try. Huh? Are you kidding me right now? What the fuck does that mean? So they only have one bird. Okay, they have to move one ahead after removing. Okay, okay that's fun. That's fun. Can I simulate the whole thing right here? Or not? So Mike always goes first, right? So Mike was given two things. So he might remove one stone from here. So ninety-nine. Now Joe removes one stone from here. Then Mike removes one stone from here. Then Joe. Okay, so they'll, they'll try to remove the least number of stones because they want at their turn to be I don't know if 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 Mike removes all of these stones and then Joey removes all of these stones then Mike is left Mike is gonna lose right so Mike will try and not remove stones and that would result in but anyway he's gonna lose uh, how can he not lose so this is gonna remove one hair one hair one hair one hair one hair one hair, one hair, one hair. until they both have one hair and one hair so now the turn would be of this guy and this guy will have to remove that last one remaining and then this guy will remove that last one only. it's all done okay that's the way so if this guy had 101 then he would always win so he's winning anyway uh, if this guy had 101 then he can win whatever is the first guy Mike so I don't know what should I write here and the stones are in So let's make a function will Mike win. And this is gonna take int n and a vector or an integer array. Right. And if n is going to be one Then this guy just wins, right?
else uh, m is equals equals to then return if return basically return if if zero is greater than l one times if n is greater than three How can I do? Idea, 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 idea. How are people solving this? I need to send the starting index to right. Or something like that. Zero parts. Why is this so fucking difficult?
I don't even know how to test the score man but I'm just gonna submit this all that's gonna do is give me a minus one or a wrong answer on pretest 2 uh, not or and a wrong answer on pretest 2 but I, I accept that man I accept that uh, uh, instead of going through the pain, I'm just going to accept that wrong answer. Okay, moving on to the next question. You're given a grid with n rows and n columns. n rows, so this is n, m columns. Uh, we denote the square on the ith. We know all that shit. All numbers are equal to 1 or negative 1. Never under underestimate the question. Okay, always read. They are starting from one. Uh, you start from the square one comma one, and you can move one square down or one square to the right at that at a time. Uh, in the end, you want to end up at the square n comma n. Uh, is it possible to move in such a way that the sum of the values written in all the residual cells, uh, including m, is zero? Okay. The wrong answer as expected. Run, run time error. Are you uh, kidding me right now? So this, this kind of went into infinite loop or some sort. Okay. No, that would be time limit exceeded. Uh, okay. So n, the value of n is never. So. This is like infinite function call is runtime error. Of course, the value of n is not decreasing. How will I fucking? How can I even fucking submit? question answer like this um. I don't know the solution to this question to be honest. I don't know what I'm doing. I have to make something
I would like when this up my right here. Again, Michael. Okay, Mike starts first. He removes all hundred. Now, the situation has again become hundred hundred. And now, Joe is gonna lose no matter what. No wait. If he's gonna remove all of these zeros, right? So the circle F removes. Wait, what the fuck was that? This does not make sense to me. So <laughs> they just clarified my doubt. So I thought if we remove all hundred, this gets removed, and the question now comes to two piles. In in that way, now whoever has landed on this will lose. But now that's not the question anymore. So we just have to look at the first pile and if i move that to zero if i if mike moves that to zero what does that mean okay so what is so this is zero. <laughs> this is bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. If, 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 index. Then return false because my closes. Plus one more n. Is equal equal zero. So the next guy is zero, and he can remove all of the numbers for sure. Return true. The only problem is that this goes up to times by nine, so we can't go on removing one number at a time so oh shit oh shit
the next so on stones if the next guy is zero but or if the next guy is us again I can't even imagine in a case of three what the fuck would I do? Let's consider one one and one. So now Mike has landed upon this, he has to remove it, goes to zero. He has to remove it, goes to zero. He has to remove it, goes to zero. Now Joey loses, right? Joey loses in one one one. Let's say one, one, two, and Joey again loses because Mike will remove two, three, Joey again loses, four, Joey again loses, right? So Joey loses on any number being hit. But let's say one, two, one here. So now Mike removes this. Joey can choose not to remove two, so this remains one, and this is already zero. This remains one, and now Mike can choose to remove this, but if he, but he has no choice. He has no choice. He has to remove this, and now. Events. So one, two, one is a win for Joey. One, one, one is a win for Mike. In fact, one, one, any number is a win for Mike. Now the complexity has arised. We have done one 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 and in this mic wins. What happens if there is three? Then he can remove two from here and make the situation again to be equal to one two one. Right. So any number other than one. If here is present, then he can always win. I don't know. Hmm. I think picking the lowest number and then reducing the array with all of the array with that
let's say n is even so n is even so one So Mike Joey, Mike Joey, Mike Joey, Mike Joey, and so on. It will go like this. So Mike will never end up at a pile of Joey, right? Or wrong? Mike Joey, Mike Joey, and then Mike Joey again. So in this case, they'll try and do something like. So if the odd positions have the largest element, no, no, mm. so I'll just look at the smallest element. Element in this case, and if it's at a location, let's say if I consider this location as 0, 1, 2, and 3. So, if the smallest element is at location 0 or 2, or some sort of that, then I can make sure that Mike will lose. Okay, this is for even case. Now, for odd case, I don't really understand this shit so Mike Joey Mike and then Joey here Mike here and Joey here and then Mike Joey Mike here right something like that so if somehow Mike can make this zero then Joey will have to come at this point and he will just lose so Joey can't do anything yeah that's it then so Mike always wins in if uh, I uh, if n is odd let's say if n percentage 2 is equals equals 1 then say Mike yes. uh, min position is equals to negative 1 or 0 if sorry and mini is equals to int max so if a of i is lesser than mini mini is equals to a of i and min position is equals to i you can make it zero so if min position mod 2 is equal to equal 0 then mike will lose so see No, I'm. Uh, I've. I think I've cracked it, but this might be wrong. I'm scared to submit it. This is not even getting used. 
Hmm, what should I do? Joey can't do anything right here. Cause if Mike has removed this zero, then it's just done basically. Joey can't uh, uh, interfere with uh, Mike's stones before. Right. So Mike just Mike just wins. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a bit weird but I think that's it sure. next problem uh, let me see the standards first Okay, cool. Two weights and it wasn't that bad. After pretty much fucking it up. Mohammed the bar or bars is really catching up. Uh, he had a wrong answer on first, and I thought he would not be. Oh my fuck! Oh, Rekul Fafa is back. This guy is one. <laughs> this guy has not done a and still this one. What a legend. Uh, Karl has done C. Sharma ji has done C. Uh, so D is quite difficult, I think. Or not, maybe. Let's see the common standings and uh, let's go to the top 20 participants. This guy is a legend. This guy is a legend. Okay, this question we had read somewhat. So we have to make the sum to be equal to zero. That means in our path we should have equal numbers, number of ones and negative ones. which doesn't mean anything so if if we were to decide on this thing how would that go so we are currently here right and we have to move here the number of paths are how many this 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 a lot of paths Right. So I don't know how well I solve this question. I'm just gonna try writing some gibberish code. Oh, and then yeah. Oh, I should have just copied it from the previous answer I gave. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. And we can also take it to be uh, bool. Right? Oh, we just have to find that if there is a path or not. Cool. So, should we do a BFS, DFS, something of for that sort? Bullshit thing, anything? Um, I think... I don't know. Since this is not finding the shortest path, this should be able to be solved by DFS. Hmm. 
This should be easy. Pretty much the question is like Wait, what the fuck is this data structure? Uh, is this a tree? This is a graph, right? Will I get plagiarism if I copy code from the internet? Huh? Uh, let's just copy it and. Bytes and code. Missing parentheses, okay. As expected, we should go. Does network X work here? Import forces. How do they do a graph in oh. how does it do a graph? Is this in Python? So I really need to learn graph about this one. I really need to. Let's just learn it now and just get it all over.
but we do need to keep a visited right so we don't visit no that is fine so we don't need to mark those notes as visited or yeah we do need to mark because like if we came from this path we don't need to go we need we don't need to traverse back here I print no when I've discovered like gone through each and every path. There has to be a better way to this. What could be the better way? Okay, okay. We can only move down or one square to the right. And that's fucked up now. So we only have two choices at every location. So two choices means a binary tree. And so all of these algorithms like these would work. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? I think I'm right. I think I'm correct. I'm a correct. Let's see the solution. <laughs> most words. I, I would love to see the most voted. Three lines. Wow. Three lines of C++. This guy is a legend. Hmm. Okay, bullshit. Um. <laughs> no, it's actually really good. I close the wrong window. Wait, I have it in here. So I just need to create a function like int or a bool or an int some something. So this kind of takes the initial int i comma int j and we all have to go till m and n. So we can just say that if i is equals equals m and uh, j equals equals m it's gonna return 0 else if i is equals equals n minus 1 and j is equals equals sorry m minus 1 equals equals n that's an obvious plus 1 of or return a of what the fuck what the fuck what the fuck was that hmm. a of m comma n right and so on and so on or what we can do is we can say some parts i 
I know, I don't know. I have to pass a sum variable. And this is this function is not gonna be sum path. This is gonna be find path which has a sum of zero. Uh, take a bool so yes or no this is going to be our answer right so so we are at ij we are we have to include our sum to be equal to a of ij so we are going to call this if sum path 0 of on on what a you have to pass a also what the fuck i don't know how to pass a 2d array with variable length <laughs> sorry guys um i think i'm gonna just do this later ggs bye